So electromotive force or voltage is the pressure in the circuit to move electrons which is known as potential or potential difference expressed in volts. Current is the movement of electrons expressed in amperes. Current takes the path of lowest resistance and resistance is the opposition to the flow of current expressed in ohms. So the abbreviation for voltage is V, current is I, resistance is R. Units are V, A and ohms. Now a lot of people use this unit. Technically this is ROM. It is used and people accept it. But technically if you look at physics it is ROM. The correct unit for current is A. Similarly sometimes people use second for SEC for second. That is ROM. The correct unit for seconds or time is S. So a lot of things we do wrong because more, many people do it and it's never corrected. But technically the correct units are uh, amperes and seconds. So Ohm's law, I guess everyone has heard of Ohm's law. In simple terms, Ohm's law says current is proportional to the voltage and current is inversely proportional to resistance which gives you I is V over R or cross multiply V is IR. So the current flowing between any two points is proportional to the potential difference between these two points and inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit between those two points. So there's various forms of Ohm's law, V is IR or I is V over R, simply cross multiplying and dividing or R is V over R. They are one and the same when you do cross multiply and divide it's exactly one and the same term. Okay, now a very simple example, very very simple. A lamp with internal resistance of 5 ohms draws the current of 2 amps. What's the voltage supplied to the lamp? So simply V is IR, meaning 5 times 2 gives you 10 volts. So it's a very basic numerical. Second example, supply voltage of 12 volts is used to supply energy to a toaster with resistance 6 ohms. What's the current? Current is given by voltage divided by resistance, 12 divided by 6, which is 2 amps. Again, very simple, very basic um, calculation. Now, you might think these are all very basic, true, but this course is your first module and there is students from different backgrounds, some with very limited background in the electrical field, so we do have to cover some basic terms and terminologies to start off. As we progress through the course, we will cover more involved terms, more um, detailed study. Alright, to start off it will be simple and then as we go through, we will cover more detailed topics. The third example is again simple, a 3 volt supply to a simple single path circuit with a 10 kilo ohm resistor which is short circuited by a copper wire. So what this says is you have a voltage of 3 volts. It has a 10 kilo ohm resistance in series and it says it is short circuited by a copper wire. So this is your copper wire. The current is measured to which sink stands. What is the resistance? So what you have to understand is current flows through the path of lowest resistance or higher, highest resistance? Lowest resistance. So current would flow through there. Negligible current to flow through here. So most of the current, six amps would flow through the wire. So simply resistance of the wire is voltage over current, 3 divided by 6.5. So this makes sense. So the wire would have a resistance of 0.5 ohms. So everyone comfortable so far with Ohm's law and basic examples? Good. Now, single phase power or DC power, DC power or single phase power is calculated by voltage into current. With AC systems you have power factor which we will look at later so don't worry for now. The DC power, power is V into I. The power is VI, there we know that V is IR, substituting you get P is I square R, or I is V over R, substituting you get P is V square over R. So they are one and the same. 
So using this, what do we get? We get R is P divided by I square. That's another way of expressing R. Or I is, I square is P divided by R, meaning I is square root of P divided by R. Different ways of representing things. From this you have V square is PR, meaning V is square root of P o, PR, P into R. So everyone agree with these terms here? There's more than one way of representing the equation for power to get various terms. And the reason I explain that is, this shows you, so E, don't worry about the symbol, you can use V if you prefer, doesn't matter. So these are all the terms for voltage, IR, P over I, square root of PR, as we saw in the previous slide. Resistance is V over I, V square over P, P over I square. Current is square root of P divided by R, P divided by V, V divided by R. And power is VI, I square R, V square by R. So these are all related because they come from the same equation. So everyone makes sense out of this various formulae for power representing the terms of K. Now we'll work, at, we'll work out some more numericals. Use the formula P is VI and Ohm's law to derive the other two equations. First one, current of 6 amps is flowing through a resistance of 4 ohms. What is the power? Right, we know that P is using those equations from the last side, I square R. So it is 6 square multiplied by 4. 144 watt. Second one, voltage is 6 volts, resistance is 100 ohms, so P is V square divided by R, 6 square divided by 100, point 36 watts. Third one, 220 ohm resistor dissipating. 10 watts, what's the current? So we know that current is square root of P divided by R square root of 220 divided by 10 which is square root of 20. Alright, so square root of 22, what's square root of 22? 4.69. So does this make sense everyone? Energy, we all pay our bills. Energy is given by power into time. So P is the power, P is the time. Energy is expressed in kilowatt hours. Resistance, resistance is the opposition to the flow of current given by resistivity multiplied by length divided by area. So, resistance is directly proportional to length, resistance is inversely proportional to area. So, I have a question for you. If length doubles, what happens to resistance? It increases, but how much does it increase by? Resistance doubles as well, correct? Very good. If area doubles, what happens if area doubles? Resistance reduces by half. Everyone follow that? Change in resistance is given by initial resistance represented by this formula where alpha is temperature coefficient of resistance which is a constant for a given material. This is the change in temperature, this is the initial resistance. So if you know initial resistance, material constant, change in temperature, you can calculate the final resistance. Resistance color coding. Okay, now. Okay, has everyone seen these resistances with color codes before? Yes, okay. So let us cover what it means. So you have colors. 
We have significant figures, multipliers, and tolerances. So, what does that mean? Let us interpret one. If you have a four band resistor, yellow, violet, red, orange, red, yellow stands for three. Sorry, yellow, you know, if we have a page, um, yellow stands for four, orange stands for three, yellow, violet, violet stands for seven, 47. Orange stands for 3, so multiplier is 10 to the power 3, that bit there, alright, 47 into 10 to the power 3, and tolerance is red, which is plus or minus 2 percent, so it's 47 kilo ohms with a tolerance of plus or minus 2 percent. If you have a 5 band resistor, red, yellow, white, red is 2, yellow is 4, white is 9, 249, orange, Kilo, so 249 kilo ohms, brown, brown stands for plus or minus 1%. So 249 kilo ohms plus or minus 1%. So you can interpret the colors to get the value and the tolerance. Does this make sense everyone? So tolerance of 5% means if it's a 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, say for example, the resistance is 1 kilo ohm plus or minus 5 percent, that means it can be within 5 percent of that value. So, range would be 950 to 1050. Okay, we will go back now. Orange, orange, silver, brown, go back. Orange is 3, orange is 3, silver is 10 to the power minus 2, so 33 into 10 to the power minus 2, and brown is plus or minus 1 percent. So this is 0.33, 10 to the power minus 2 means divide by 100, so 0.33 plus or minus 1 percent. So go forward to the question, so 0.33 plus or minus 1 percent. The second one, is bla brown, black, brown, only three, so <coughs> brown and black, one and zero, and then multiplier of ten, so ten into ten hundred, no tolerance. Tolerance is not defined, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a tolerance. When there is no fourth color, it means no color, no color means twenty percent. So everyone follow that, if you don't have a, a tolerance defined, by default, you assume it to be 20 percent. So just remember that. Doesn't mean it is zero. It is 20 percent. So 100 ohms with a tolerance of 20 percent. 